Hey, welcome to Gold's Grudge again. Yeah, and it's still my 307, I know. I made a lot of videos about it, but there seems to be interest in it. So uh, the last one uh, video I made stated that uh, the dyno test uh, not, wasn't available. It was supposed to be yesterday. And Daryl had to reschedule us the next week. Uh, the dyno wasn't available. So uh, going through today, all the diagnostic checks that I would always and normally do uh, before we go to the dyno, so I thought I'd make a quick video. I hope you find it in, uh, helpful and some information that uh, may be useful uh, to you. So, uh, yeah, we want to go to the dyno and make power, that's all good, but we want to make sure the engine is going to live too. And one of the ways to make sure that it's healthy, it's very much like when you go to your doctor and get a physical, it's kind of a physical for engines. So here's all the things, I'm going to describe all the things that we do uh, before any engine leaks here, whether it's going to the dyno or not. So already what's happened already, we started and run it, I put about 45 minutes uh, on the engine already, uh, two tanks of fuel through my uh, uh, test stand, and it's run fine. We've taken the valve covers off multiple times, checked the valves every time. Uh, we made the runs are like five to 10 minutes long typically. And normally we wouldn't do it that often, but we're so paranoid lately about this valve lifter issue that uh, I wanted to make sure if anything, anything was wrong, we would find it early. So far, so good. And not even so far, so good. The cam's broken in. We know it's good. We're confident in that. We're not worried about it. It's got 45 minutes on it. I just checked the valves again uh, for the last time and they're fine. So got that behind us. That's really important. The engine runs good. So what else can we do? Uh, to make sure we know the engine is going to be fine. So here's a quick list of things that I would typically do. Uh, first of all, we've got to pull the spark plugs anyway, so the spark plug is always a diagnostic. Uh, everything's good there. Now the fact that the engine's run on a, on a, on a test stand where you can't make torque, put it, or put it under load, so a lot of basically idling, even though it's idling in high speed, the engine's running rich. You're running on the, on the idle jets of the carburetor, and so you're going to have kind of a rich mixture on your plugs. That's not a problem. So here's the next list of checks that I made. Um, is first of all a compression check, which uh, many people do with a typical compression checker. You put it in one cylinder at a time, crank the engine over on the starter, and measure the dynamic. This is really a measure of the dynamic pressure that I talked about earlier. Um, we're good. There's, what we're looking for mainly is variation. If one cylinder was really lower than the rest or whatever, then we'd be worried about that. They're not they're very close together and they're all on spec and, uh, and we think or are confident that they'll get better after the engine's broken in. The camshaft's broken in, the rings are not broken in and they're not going to be broken in until it goes on the dyno and it gets uh, work hard under load through the full RPM range. 10 or 12, 15 pulls or whatever, and then the rings will be broken in and, and you'll have a good cylinder seal. So that's one check, that's been done already, it's documented, everything gets documented on the Excel spreadsheet. The next check is really a more precise check than that, and that's a leak down tester. This is my Moroso leak down tester. I've had this tester for more than 25 years, and it's come in very useful. So it's a little uh, more sophisticated check, what we do is use air pressure from our compressor, uh, connect one cylinder at a time to, to the uh, compression tester, or to the leak down tester. And what it does, it measures the amount of uh, air that escapes through the cylinder uh, when you pressurize the cylinder. You have to lock the cylinder at top dead center to do it right. And in order to do that, we use this little claw device on the starter to the, to the flywheel. Otherwise, when you put pressure to the cylinder, it's going to push that piston down and you're never going to get a good test. So, if you haven't got one of these little guys, if you're going to do a leak down tester, it's a nice tool to have. So, once again, check all these cylinders. We follow the fire order, 184-36572. And that's all been done. And our, once again, our numbers are good. There's a small, var small variation, normal variation uh, in it. And numbers are about what we would expect. And we'll look for those numbers to get even better after the engine is broken in but the real main reason to do it is if there is something wrong you'll have a large fairly large variation a um, couple things here we did use those steel head gaskets uh, they're fine but 
were a little more worried than normal than a composite gasket, a steel head gasket. Doesn't seal as well. You need better conditions to make it seal, but it's fine. That's one of the reasons we check it. The other benefit of a leak down tester is this. If you do have a bad number, you can tell where it's going. You can actually hear it. If it's an exhaust valve, you can hear it coming out the port. If it's an intake valve, you can hear it coming back up to the carburetor. Uh, normally, normally, almost, or all of your leakage should be into the, into the crankcase past your uh, piston rings. And that's, that's typical, and that's what we had at this time. Another test, I'm not sure if I'm too close to the camera here, is a, a cooling system test. So we pressurize the radiator and the cooling system to about 15 PSI, whatever the normal operating pressure of the engine is going to be, and make sure that that holds. Once again, if there was a head gasket leak, for example, that pressure would fall quickly uh, if, uh, if, if the head gasket leaked in air or water, or whatever is leaking by it. So that's another good test the engine, that the engine is uh, tight. Um, so the next thing, so that's all good. We, we are pretty confident, very confident in the engine. The next thing that I'm going to do, I haven't done yet, but I'm going to do next. I have to drain you all anyway, as I mentioned, we always, after this break-in on the test stand, we drain you all before we go to the dyno. But break in oil in again, because once again, the camshaft's broken in, the, the rings are not broken in. So we still got to do that. So I put break-in oil back in it, but we change the oil and filter, of course. And when I drain the filter, I haven't done it yet, I'll drain it through this very, very fine paint filter. And if there's any debris or shrapnel or anything uh, in the oil, we're going to find it. And the next thing we'll do is cut the oil filter apart, spread all the pleats out, measure that with a bright light, and make sure there's nothing uh, in there as well. If there is anything going on that's uh, not good, it'll show up uh, in your oil or in the oil filter. So that's pretty much uh, the main checks. The only thing I have left to do, uh, Scott bought some real nice valve covers. I don't have the gaskets for them yet, so I got to. These are kind of my shop valve covers. So I got to put Scott's uh, beautiful cast uh, valve covers on there. And we can't do that until I get gaskets for it next week. So um, that's about it. I hope you have found that interesting. And, and, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, having gone through all these tests, uh, we're always confident, but you, you got to know and you got to check. And, and then you're even more confident. So we passed, the, we passed our physical and we're ready for the dyno. So look forward to that. Uh, that will be our next video uh, next Saturday. Hope you found that interesting. Keep those subscriptions coming in. We love it. And thanks for watching Gold Scratch. Likes are good too. Thank you.